Hello everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Today I want to discuss the need for multiple regression. Recall that regression, there are the standard regression model, there are two basic ones, the simple linear regression model and the multiple linear regression model. In any course in stats or econometrics we always begin with the simple linear regression model. Recall this is the model where there is a dependent variable denoted generically by y and there is one independent variable denoted by x. That's the generic formula symbol. So there is only two variables in the simple linear regression model, one y and one x. For the multiple linear regression model there is more than one independent variable. So there is two or there are two or more. Okay, well my question to you is since the simple linear regression model is the simplest, simpler than the multiple, why don't we just use that all the time? Let's give you an example. I've got data on healthcare here. My, I've got three variables. My dependent variable, my DV, is the reported disease rate, rate per 10,000. I just want to see whether if the government puts more money into healthcare whether the disease rates comes down. We'd expect it should come down. Also how about visits to healthcare providers? How would that be related to the diseases. Well, we kind of think that the more people visits to healthcare providers, more people who visit healthcare providers, the reported disease rates should go up. I would expect a positive correlation there. Because more people who visit, probably more chance of detecting more disease. More people, more disease. Between healthcare funding and reported disease, we would expect a negative correlation because the more money they put into healthcare, we expect that to help improve the healthcare system, and so the reported disease rate should come down. See, so this is not statistics, it's just using kind of common sense. Right, so why don't we fit two simple linear regression models? One regressing uh, the disease on healthcare funding and one a second model of disease on visits to healthcare providers so i two two separate sim simple linear regression models let's do that regression linear i take the disease rate into a dependent variable Let's do funding first, move that into independent variable box. I click OK. Right, want to go straight down to the coefficients table here. The beta for the slope coefficient for the independent variable is here. Okay. Well, what you can see is that it is positive. So that saying that as that there is a positive correlation between healthcare funding and reported disease rates. That's contrary to what we'd expect. So this is saying that the more money we, because it's a positive sign here, positive 1.134, the more money we put into healthcare, the higher the reported disease rates, contrary to what we'd expect. I'm going to explain to you in a moment why we get this 
sign, a positive sign, which is contrary to what we'd expect. Now, let's do the same, but with the other independent variable. Analyze, regression, linear, funding, take that away, visits, take that in. Before we look at the output, recall that we said we expect a positive correlation, so we expect there to be a positive slope coefficient. So we'll, let's go down. Right, so visits to healthcare providers. It's positive under uh, coefficients. Positive 1.048. Now, so we ex expected a positive sign, we get a positive sign. This is saying that the if, if increase for, for increases in the visits to healthcare providers, we get uh, an increase in reported disease rates. Right. So let's pause and reflect. In the first simple linear regression, we found a result contrary to what we expected. But in the second one of uh, disease rates on healthcare providers, we got the expected sign. Now, how can we explain the uh, unexpected uh, sign for the first regression? Right. Well, the key is this. It is that if the dependent variable depends on more than one key independent variable, those independent variables should go into the model together. So in this case, if we think that disease rate depends on both healthcare funding and the number of visits to healthcare providers, we must put both those independent variables into the same model. Failure to do that, if we think that we can try just running them one by one, i.e. just running instead of a multiple regression, we run separate simple linear regression models, our coefficients are liable to be wrong in so it will be either too high or too low. In statistical jargon we say that these coefficients are biased. Okay. So if I summarize this lesson in a nutshell it, it is that simple linear regression model cannot take the place of multiple regression model where multiple regressions should be run, we should not just run separate simple linear regression models. If we do so, we get biased estimators. That's the lesson. There is uh, one exception, which you don't need to uh, take this on board, because for real life data it's probably not uh, not uh, applicable. Theoretically, we c instead of running a, we can get uh, by by running simple linear regression models, separate ones instead of multiple ones, if the independent variables are uncorrelated, zero correlation. So in this case, what I mean is to say that we got two independent variables we've got, let's go just go back, we've got funding and visits. Now if funding and visits are uncorrelated, of zero correlation, then instead of running a uh, multiple regression of disease on funding and visits, we can run them separately on disease and funding, disease and visits. In that case we would get unbiased estimators. Okay, so so even if so even if the question was that I'm interested in looking at the effect of funding on disease and I'm not really interested in the visits on disease because visits also affects disease we should include it even though we're not interested in its um, impact on disease okay for that reason 
There's such variables which for which we are not interested in, but we have to include them otherwise because we have to con we have otherwise we get biased estimators for the coefficients that I'm interested in. Coefficients on the variables that I'm interested in. These extra variables that we must include are called control variables. Okay, so control variables we we're not interested in them per se, but we must include them because uh, otherwise uh, the coefficients on the on the IV that we're interested in is likely to be biased. All right. So why don't we now run a multiple regression model and see how the thing changes? Right, we'll put both funding and visits now. So we're going to run a this becomes now a multiple regression. So we have two independent variables. So we'll have two betas here. Let's see. Right, so say I'm specifically interested in the effect of healthcare funding on disease rates. We can see now, look, that the coefficient is closer to zero. Healthcare funding is zero. Moreover, it's insignificant, meaning that it's not significantly different from zero. Meaning, according to this model, healthcare funding does not impact, it's not a predictor for reported disease. So before it was very positive, now it's come right down, it's got closer to zero. So if we go back to the start. It was 1.134. Now it is 0 0.05, which is close to zero. Look at the control variable visits to healthcare providers. It's positive as before. You can imagine, but it's still positive. But but actually, it's it's different. It's uh, zero. It's not significantly different from zero. You can imagine that there are other control variables that we might include here. Um, and if we find those other control variables, this could well come down to be negative. So in other words, this model here is probably still not adequate. But the degree of bias is, we'd expect, is, is smaller now than bef before when we look at the simple linear regression models. Okay, well, so don't make that mistake. If you need multiple, run multiple don't run simple. In practice, especially for, so, like for example social survey data experiments, you in real life you uh, I mean simple linear regression models uh, to help you understand how regression works but they're rarely applicable in the real world. So you should always be thinking multiple regression. Okay, take care.